So the first question, of course, is how are you dealing with this? What is your plan to meet this judgment? Well, it's so sad. First of all, I'm a guy that grew up in New York. My father built a skyline of New York, and this is an election interference. And they go out and they ask you to post a half a billion dollar bond. Maria, I want to put that in context. I went out to the largest sureties in the world, the largest sureties in the country. They said, Eric, the last time we've seen a bond of that size is when we did the big dig in Boston, which was a $25 billion construction project that lasted almost 25 years. They're trying to put my father out of business. They're trying to take all his resources that he'd otherwise put into his own campaign for, for presidency. This is New York State. This is what we're seeing. Letitia James campaigned on this promise, and now they're, they're making him do something that's not physically possible. Putting up a half a billion dollar bond, bonds that size don't exist in this country. A $10 million bond is a large bond. A $15 million bond is an enormous bond. A half a billion dollar bond? And Maria, remember one thing. The banks all testified. Trump was the greatest borrower we've ever had. I mean, there, there was no victim. There's, this is a crooked system with a crooked attorney general in a crooked court that literally wants to put my father out of business. And, and you know who they're actually going to hurt? They're going to hurt the thousands and thousands of employees that we have in New York State. These are janitors. These are doormen. These are you know, people that work in commercial buildings. They're going to hurt those individuals, not, not the executive. They're going to hurt those individuals. How about all the contractors that we employ to do build outs? How about you know, everybody else that relies on our family, thousands of people, yeah. all for their own political vendetta. I, it's I'm insane. Understanding Eric Trump's frustration and anger is not difficult. As his depiction of a biased and unjust legal system echoes the fundamental democratic principles of individual rights and fairness. His words convey a sense of helplessness and absurdity in the face of injustice portraying a struggle against external forces beyond individual control. Eric Trump's critique of the legal system, highlighting its inherent flaws and corruption, reflects a deep-seated concern about the arbitrary, exercise of authority, and the lack of accountability within the system. His remarks also should light on the politicization of the legal process, suggesting that parties and motives often overshadow considerations of fairness and justice. Moreover, Eric Trump's narrative underscores the broader democratic apprehension regarding the repercussions of excessive government intervention on the livelihoods and economic stability of employees and contractors. By framing the situation as an assault on his father's business, Eric Trump defends the core values of entrepreneurship and free enterprise against perceived governmental intrusion. Furthermore, his narrative underscores the existential threat posed by external forces to individual autonomy and identity, particularly within the realms of family and professional life. Interpreted through a conservative lens, Eric Trump's remarks resonate with narratives of sacrifice and injustice. Tapping into prevalent anxieties within conservative circles about the encroachment of government power and the integrity of the legal system.